So no, this is not a gardening video, although I do need to harvest my bell peppers, so I thought I would start this out while I do that. Um, unless you've been living under a rock, you know that there's some crazy stuff going on around the world right now, and I cannot tell you how important it is for you to be prepared. I'm not going to call myself a prepper. I'm not. I have lots of hobbies. Gardening is one of them. I just wanted to, you know, put a warning out there that there's no reason why you shouldn't be prepared in case anything happens. Now, this is going to be a generator video. We're fixing to get to my generator, but there's things that you're going to want to make sure that you have in case you can't go to the store and get what you need. We've already been seeing supply shortages. There's ships off the coast of California. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on in, around the rest of the world with, with shipping, if you have bare shelves like we do. But this is something that I don't believe we've seen and, and they're trying to tell us that we just need to uh, expect less and I don't know about you, but I don't want to go without something. So where this video is going is you can do a lot of prepping to make sure that you have what you need, but if you don't have any power and who knows what's going to happen, you need a generator. And the thing about generators is most of the time when they come into the shop, we get over 2000 pieces of equipment every year. And most things people can wait on generators when they need them. That's not something they can wait on. We try to get them out as fast as possible, preferably that day because they needed it already 10 hours ago. And we don't want their food to spoil. We have people that are on oxygen that they have to have electricity. So it's very important. If you think there's a possibility that you need a generator and for food storage, you're definitely going to want to have a generator. You need to check it right now and make sure that it's ready to go. So I have a stand-up freezer, a chest freezer, and two refrigerators at my house. So I need a big generator to power all that in case the power goes off. And it does a lot of the times here in Arkansas, uh, a storm can knock the power out. So it doesn't have to be some big event that's going to happen. So I always make sure that my generator is running efficiently because I don't want to lose any of my food. Now, my generator is a Black Max. It's a uh, 7,000 watt. It's powered by a Honda GX390. Um, this is an excellent engine. And today I wanna show you the things that you might just wanna think about, you know, prepping so you won't have any issues whenever your power goes out. So let's be a little honest here. Nobody ever thinks about their generator until it's time to use it. And by that time, it's been sitting for a year at least, maybe two years or longer, and it's not going to run if it had fuel sitting in it. So the quickest, most easiest way to get you going, because if your power's out, first of all, you're not gonna be wanting to pop onto YouTube and sit down and fix on your generator for you know a couple hours, or you're not gonna even have the parts. So right now you need to go to your generator and find the model number off of it and see how much is a carburetor. Most of the time you can get them for like 20, 30 bucks aftermarket. I mean, if you want to get OEM just to make sure that would be good too, but it would give you that security to know that in any circumstance, you're ready to go and power up what you need. On most all of the Hondas, you can actually find the serial number right here on the side of the engine. You'll need that, which it determines which carburetor you have because even though it's a GX390, they make different carburetors depending on what kind of linkages because of whatever kind of unit that might be on. Another thing to think about is a pull rope. I know it's something simple that you're not gonna think about until it breaks, but if it does, you have to have the right size and length to make it start. So you want to go get five feet of probably number five rope, just have it around the house. That way you have that security to know that if your pull rope breaks, you can fix it. And yes, my dog got a hold of my handle. I do have to replace that, but it still works right now. Another thing that you're going to want to check and make sure that you have around the house is some 30 weight oil to put into your generator if it needs it because they do use a little bit of oil and if it does not have enough oil in it, most generators have an oil sensor switch that will actually um, kill the engine if it does not have the right amount 
of oil in the machine. So a lot of times people have no clue what's wrong with their generator and that's all it is. It's the oil sensor switch if it has the wrong amount. Now we start ours with our uh, rewind assembly, but if you can't, if you got shoulder issues, back issues, something like that, make sure that your battery is put on a trickle charger so whenever you need it, it's ready to roll. Most all generators come with a fuel shutoff either on the bottom of the tank or inline. You'll want to make sure that when you're getting done using it, shut the fuel off and just let it die. Um, another thing when you're going to go start it up for the first time, how, you know, gas does not last 60 days anymore. So you might have to empty your tank, which it seems like it's a big task, but actually there's only four bolts holding this whole fuel tank onto the, to the unit. So it's pretty easy to remove and just dump the whole thing out and rinse it out if you need to. Just make sure that you check your fuel. You'll pull this little screen out. Look down in there, make sure there's no rust and uh, that your gas is still good. Okay, so I don't care if your generator has been sitting six months or six years, there is on most of them and Honda is really good about putting these little drain plugs on the side of the carburetor bowls. You need to release that, tip it on its side a little bit, make sure you get whatever is in that bowl out before you go. And it'll also give you a, a precursor on if it has any kind of chunky, nasty stuff in there and that you might have to take the whole bowl off and clean it. So make sure to drain out whatever has been sitting in your bowl. Air filters. Now, a lot of generators have paper element air filters, so you don't have to worry about it as much, but many generators have foam filters inside and they do last a long time but they do deteriorate and if you grab yours out and you smush it and you can see little chunks of it coming off it's doing it on both sides it'll suck those chunks into your carburetor right through this little hole right here and that is not good so always check your air filter smush it a little bit make sure that it's not deteriorating to where it's going to be detrimental to your engine now, I do not have a Tecumseh on a generator to show you here, but I do have my tiller with a Tecumseh engine on it. And to find the model number, Tecumseh is really good. Usually there's one right here on the side. You will need the model OHH60 and a spec number to um, order any kind of parts that you will need for that if you want to get a backup carburetor. And you can find those real cheap online too. So I do not have a um, Briggs & Stratton engine on a generator, but I do have one on my chipper shredder. If you have a flathead Briggs engine on your generator, the model number will be stamped. It'll be model type and code stamped somewhere on the outside of the metal shroud going over your flywheel. If it is an overhead valve like this one is, the overhead valve cover actually has the model type and code number stamped right into the side of it. So you can order whatever parts you need. And last but not least, there are a lot of what I call Chonda engines on generators that like Harbor Freight sells and, and some of the, you know, big box stores. They do not have a Honda. It's called a Chonda because it's sort of like a Chinese knockoff of the engine, which they're just as good as any of the other engines while they, you know, are running. But if you let them sit, they're going to do the same thing. So I would get the model off the front of the engine, which it's really simple. I mean, the Internet's made it so easy to get parts for these, I mean, you can't get actual carburetor parts for lots of them. Like if you just need a needle, you can't get it. You have to buy a whole carburetor, but it's super simple. Just get the model off the front of it, type in yada, yada, yada carburetor. It'll pop one up. It's like 20 bucks. Just get one. And then you know that you are ready to go if anything ever happens. So I know we didn't fix anything today, but I really just wanted to make this video as like a prepping warning and just in case kind of thing, because I don't want you to spend lots of money at the repair shop if it's not needed, because you know what they're going to do? They're going to put that same exact carburetor on there that you could already have at your home, ready to go, simply put it on and have power and not have to worry about it. So thanks for tuning back into Jacanic. Hopefully this video saved you time, money, and frustration in the future. Thanks and have a great day.